Yeah, welcome parents. Uh, so uh, we will get started with this uh, webinar uh, right away. We'll also share a recording with those who uh, joined late. So we'll just uh, start off by introducing ourselves and uh, then we will have the presentation and after that we can have the Q&A. You can keep entering your uh, questions on chat as we uh, go along. We'll speak for about 30, 35 minutes and after that uh, we'll have a conversation. So my name is Vishnu Agnihotri. I'm one of the co-founders of GenWise and uh, the Gifted India Network, which is a network of uh, organizations uh, which works uh, on uh, identifying and nurturing gifted students. Uh, so I have been uh, working in education for a fairly long time. I used to be with educational initiatives, which conducted the asset uh, talented talent search uh, test right from 2009. Um, so let me hand over to my uh, colleagues, uh, Eklavya Shetty and Bindu Pillai to introduce themselves. After that, we'll start the presentation. Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Bindu Pillai. I work with educational initiatives and I have the privilege of leading the Asset Talent Search project uh, for the past uh, 14 years now. And uh, uh, I welcome you all to this informative uh, webinar. Uh, I now invite uh, Eklavia to introduce here himself. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. I might have spoken to a few of you. And uh, uh, for everybody who doesn't know me, uh, this is, uh, I'm Eklavia Shetty. I'm the residential head and uh, the person who manages the summer program uh, at, summer program at the Manipal University program that we are planning introducing. I've been doing uh, summer programs since uh, working with gifted students and doing gifted summer programs since 2016. So it's now the 16th year we are heading in, uh, in the eighth year that I'm heading into. I've been, I've done over 15 to 17 summer programs, including summer programs at John Hopkins University. I've also been a part of uh, their uh, functioning and their staff for about two sessions that I did there. So it's been, uh, we look forward to having most a uh, lot of your students at our programs and with that, I'll hand it over to Vishnu. So one small request is uh, for everybody who's uh, joined us, please, it would be great if you can uh, put down your uh, name on the Zoom as either your child's full name so that that will also help us get uh, more information and help you, help us uh, get in touch with you post the program as well. So uh, if that is possible, please do that. Apart from that, I'll hand it over to Vishnu, sir. Yeah, thank you, Eklavya. So, uh, Pooja, we will answer your questions. Uh, so, initially, I will talk about the purpose of the program, uh, about GenWise and uh, why this uh, program, what are the benefits. And you've asked some questions about logistics, very important. Uh, so, Eklavya will address those questions uh, after I finish talking about the uh, overall things. It is a residential program. Uh, for uh, two weeks for the younger kids, three weeks for the older kids. And uh, you can drop the children if you can, but even if you can't drop the children, we pick them from the airport and drop. So I want you to be at peace regarding this before we uh, start this. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, Bindu will just introduce the larger thing first and then I'll get into the details. So uh, uh, yeah. So Bindu, hold on one second. I will uh, get the right screen going. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the May 2024 gifted summer program. There's also going to be a program in July, more for international schools and students from the UAE. So we're not going to cover the details of that here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I welcome you all again to this webinar. Uh, congratulations to all the students who have participated in ATS and who are in the top 25 percentile. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we have been doing asset talent search since 2009. Uh, we started identifying gifted children uh, for Duke University and uh, we uh, identify gifted children for them and they used to do summer camps in India. From 2009 till 2015, we were helping the Duke University to identify gifted children. And in 2015, when Duke closed his operation in India, and that's when we started our own talent identification test called Asset Talent Search Test. It's a globally recognized test. When I say globally recognized, that means the scores uh, of this test are recognized by top you know, universities, uh, universities who does gifted programs. 
uh, some of them are, sir, I can't see the slide. Uh, uh, have you stopped sharing? Vishnu, sir? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was some internet issue. No, I think it should be fine. Okay, yeah. thanks. No problem. So uh, when I say it's a globally recognized test, that means the scores of this test are recognized by top universities like John Hopkins Center for Talent Development, Northwestern uh, University, GenWise, which is an organization based out of India. They also do gifted programs for the university, SIG. SIG is a nonprofit organization. So all of these universities and organization does gifted programs and they accept ATS score in the admission process. So uh, we will be having a series of webinars in the coming days, wherein our nurturing partners will be uh, presenting their programs. And starting with, uh, we will be starting with GenWise. GenWise team is here. Uh, Mr. Vishnu Agnoitri, who is one of the co-founders of this organization, will now speak about the program, the summer gifted program, also the mm -hmm. online programs, which is which will be there for younger kids. So I welcome Vishnu, or uh, you can take it forward from here. Thank you, Bindu. Yeah. yeah. Right. So a quick introduction to GenWise uh, itself. So we are a team of highly accomplished uh, mentors from different disciplines and uh, individual experience of two to three decades, uh, both subject knowledge and working with children. And we've been doing programs for gifted and talented uh, students since 2016, as uh, Eklavya mentioned. Um, so, uh, one of the key goals for us is to bridge the gap between the subject expertise of these mentors and these gifted middle and high school uh, students, because in school they necessarily don't get uh, exposure to these different domains, critical thinking, socio-emotional skills will, which go into uh, really translating their gifts into achievement. I will talk about that. So we do programs in various formats. The residential program is our flagship program. We also do uh, online and uh, in-school programs. Uh, we do uh, mentoring for teachers and parents also. So uh, one thing is uh, by the end of this month, you will receive an invite in your email to join a community called Gifted World, uh, where we will have regular blog posts. Uh, there'll be free and paid events to help you throughout the year in your uh, journey of uh, working with your gifted children. So wait for that uh, email and uh, we'll be engaging with you through the year on various things. So as I said, we have expert mentors from around the world, uh, experts in different fields. For example, here you see uh, Naveen Kabra in the left uh, center, who's a computer scientist with 25 computer science patents. He's, uh, you know, teaches uh, different courses for us, especially around artificial intelligence, machine learning. On the center right, you see Sukanya Sinha, who's a physicist, and uh, she's going to she's going to be one of the mentors in the junior program this year. So a lot of accomplished uh, mentors, a uh, lot of experience, and they're really inspirational for the students. And yeah, people from an academic background, uh, professional experience from the education sector. So I won't go into all these details. Uh, you can go to our website and click on the mentor profile space to get an idea of the kind of uh, mentors your children will be working with in the program. Some testimonials. I know that many of you, especially first time, if you're sending your child, you'll be concerned about safety and security. Eklavya will share the details of uh, our protocol on the residential program. It is the highest priority for us, safety, 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 and also to keep the children comfortable, uh, to enjoy the food and uh, all of that. So this is a feedback from uh, a child in the, from Dhirubhai Ambani International School who had come in 2019. So the parent uh, says that, you know, this is the first time she was sending her uh, child to a camp. And uh, she was, you know, completely satisfied uh, with this. We never uh, leave the kids alone. There are, there are these people supervising them at all the time. Yeah. And we are always accessible uh, to you for any kind of uh, challenge you face. We've been doing this, as Eklavia said, from 2016. And we've done 12 or 13 residential programs. So we're really quite confident of uh, taking care of your children and I can guarantee you that if your child comes to the program, uh, 
they will be crying when they are leaving and they will not want to leave. So because that is something which has happened uh, many, many times. Yeah. One more testimonial from uh, the parent of uh, Sheel Mehta, who had come from Ahmedabad uh, for the May program earlier this year. And I think this parent has expressed what happens in our program better than we ever could. So I'm going to read out what he says. That I, as a parent, think that Gen Y has enabled something very interesting and valuable to a child's growth. Specifically, it is the only place I know where a kid chooses a course, right? Because we are not compelling them to take a particular course. Hopefully, you are also not compelling them. We, are, we may have to guide them. Uh, the kid, only place where kids studies with other new kids with limited prior friendships, if at all. So there is little prior comfort with the class. There are no cliques. There are no, you know, uh, these, these children go together. There are no enemies. So, you know, it's a completely new environment. You're surrounded by kids who are presumably above a certain level of mental acuity. Yes, certainly you're all asset talent search, gold, silver, bronze, commendable scholars. So definitely you're in a different peer environment. There are no exams. So you're not doing it for grades or to impress anyone. It's on not more than a full week. It's on for two weeks or three weeks. And you have enough time to assimilate the topic instead of just going at the surface level. So uh, as we keep saying that uh, the senior children who come for the three-week program, you're doing 90 to 100 hours. It's equal to one semester of undergraduate work in a university. So you're doing it in three weeks without the pressure, but just you know, uh, learning uh, for fun. Um, so, and you're learning with a teacher who's not, yeah, we're not doing this primarily for money. Yes, we pay our instructors and our staff. But as you can see from the profiles, they are basically doing it out of passion, uh, mainly. Uh, the child knows that he or she is not going to be judged for however they perform. There is no performance pressure. We challenge them a lot. We challenge them a lot, but there is no pressure, right? So, But uh, we uh, want them to try hard. Uh, they are not at home, so parents have no chance to get in the way. I love how... Uh, Soham has put this, and uh, I know you all love your children, are doing a lot of good stuff for your children. But believe me that at a certain age, they it's good. It's good for them to be away from their parents for a while. It uh, really helps them a lot to come into their uh, own. So this is a pristine set of circumstances that reveals the kid in his or her element, his or her likes and dislikes, strengths and weaknesses. It shows what the kid really is at this time of their life. The teachers at Gen Y have a front row seat to this event. Even the parents will never have the chance and obviously the school won't. What the teacher observes at the end of this hence tells a lot about the kid <clears throat> in a way that nothing else will. The instructor's letter to the kid at the end, however exciting or banal, becomes very valuable to parents like me. So we write a very detailed, personalized letter to the child because we have to give a mirror to the child which guides the child forward. And if you want to see samples of how that looks, just write to Eklavya and he will share samples with you. So with that, I will uh, give you, I'll get into a little bit of the background of what is this whole gifted program, why this gifted program. Um, so I'll take about 10 minutes on that. Yeah, so Eklavya, we can go on to the yeah. next slide, yeah. Yeah. So in the ordinary elementary school situation, children of IQ 140 waste half their time. Those above IQ 170 waste practically all their time. With little to do, how can these children develop power of sustained effort, respect for the task, or habits of steady work? <clears throat> so this is a well-known psychologist in the space of gifted education who said this. So essentially, while school is doing a great job on many fronts, discipline, foundational knowledge, but school has to deal with everyone. So here what we are uh, doing is to uh, get children together, gifted children, and challenge them at their level. Uh, because unless you have this kind of a challenge, you will not uh, develop the power of sustained effort, steady work, because you are able to crack the school exams with very little effort. So unless you're challenged, you will not develop uh, these executive function skills. Yeah, go on, uh, Eklavia. Yeah, right. So early identification, you've already uh, taken asset talent search uh, test. So 
so many innovators like here you see mark zuckerberg and lady gaga and sergey brin and uh, so on so all of these people actually went to a program like this john hopkins center for talented youth and 10 to 14 is a good age to come to uh, to identify and then you know come to such a program yeah let's go on <coughs> please please uh, yeah. explain the slide again explain the slide again the previous one okay right uh, ekle can you just go back to that slide yeah so what is uh, important about this slide is the third point so what this the slide is basically saying is that um, so psychologists say that gifts or talents concretize by age 14 so what they mean by that is that uh, till the age of 14 you may keep seeing new things so for example uh, at the age of 7 or 8 you may not see certain things the child is doing for example you may not see that the child is showing a lot of interest in uh, reading or reading above the level or something like that but suddenly at the age of 10 you may see uh, sometimes you may see early interest in math sometimes you may see it coming at uh, age 9 or 10 or whatever but it is unlikely that you will see new things emerging after age 14 so what this slide is basically so this slide is saying two things one is that uh, try to identify uh, what your gifts are and whether you are gifted by uh, age 14 and uh, typically before age 10 also it doesn't make too much sense i, I know that some of the asset talents of children are below age 10 uh, grade uh, 4 5 they may be you know 8 9 years old but that is still a tentative thing so this thing will keep uh, changing so 10 to 14 is sort of the ideal age uh, the second thing the slide is saying is you can lose these gifts or not develop these gifts if you do not give the right kind of opportunity right kind of opportunity means you have to be challenged sufficiently your interests have to be uh, you have to be given a platform to explore your interests. Uh, yeah, so if there are any other questions about this, uh, I'm happy to answer this after we complete this. But this is basically what this slide is saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, go on, Iklavia. Yeah. yeah, so uh, Iklavia, just play this video. So it's a three and a half, four minute video, which will just give you a flavor of the program. And after that, I will take five minutes to uh, raise some key points. Yeah. Uh, Vishnu, uh, is this uh, presentation covering our uh, overview of the uh, course curriculum? Yeah, I will talk about the courses also, yes. Yeah, and if you need more details about the courses, yeah, you can reach out to us and we'll give you more details, but I will talk about what courses are available and, available and broadly what is covered, yes. Eklavya, you need to increase the volume. Or is it me? Uh, when I got my ATS results, I vividly remember my grandmother being there and she was very supportive of it. Although I hadn't thought about the results too much before that because I didn't want to be disappointed when I got them, I realized that they were actually quite good because I got Gold Scholar and I was very proud of myself, especially because my parents and my entire family was very supportive of me. Um, seeing the opportunities it brought, I was very excited as well. My teacher, Prabhu sir, he's absolutely amazing because he treats physics like it's something fun to enjoy and like a game. So every day when we come to class, we play with physics, we learn how to do experiments, learn about theories, and then we go back knowing a lot more and even knowing how to do a lot more in terms of experiment and how to test theories and things like that. He gets a chance to interact with people of his own mind length, wave length, when you go to a normal class in school, सारे बच्चे सब तरह के बच्चे आते हैं कुछ स्पोर्ट्स में अच्छे होते हैं कुछ एकेडमिक्स में अच्छे होते हैं और स्कूल जब उसे टीच करती है तो जस्ट दे हैव टू बी अ नॉर्मल जनरल लेवल पे बात कर सकते हैं वो बहुत हाई लेवल भी बात नहीं कर सकते 
लेकिन यहाँ पे दे कैन गो बी ऑन द कोर्स skills have um improved a lot and i have managed my frustration my stress my anger issues everything has been under control since i came here and my patient service have increased a lot like after taking up the forensic course teamwork has been a key part to solving our cases the crimes that we have to solve and i feel like i learned a lot about different moral skills एक छोटा सा और बात बताता हूँ लाइक वैन यू वॉज हियर एंड आई वॉज विद माई फ्रेंड्स एंड आई वॉज वी वॉज जस्ट हैविंग ए चैट एंड आदि कॉड आई वॉज आउट साइड तो मैंने बताया उनको भाई एट गॉन टू द समर प्रोग्राम तो आई ऑल्सो पुट आदि ऑन स्पीकर एंड आई टोल्ड अपने कोई अंकल से बात करो वगैरह एंड आदि वॉज वेरी हैप्पी एंड एक्साइटेड तो जैसे फोन का यार बोल रहे कि यार आवाज़ में ही लग रहा है कि उसमें बहुत चेंज आ गया आदि यूज टू बी अ लिटिल बिट रिजर्व टाइम वी सोशल इंटरेक्शन में आई थिंक जो इस लेवल के प्रोग्राम आते हैं नॉर्मली सोशल इंटरेक्शन में तो चाहे सा लिटिल बिट रिजर्व फर्स्ट डे वेन आई स्पोक टू हर आई थिंक आई वॉज द मोस्ट रिलीफ बिकॉज द स्माइल ऑन हर फेस वॉज अनबिलीवेबल लाइक आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर हर टू जस्ट स्पीक टू मी एट नाइन but she was so relaxed so calm and it just her face told me the story that she's enjoyed every moment from the time she's entered the campus the icing on the cake is the uh, last night when we spoke with her it was her last day and she refuses to come back yeah so that's that, that speaks volume volumes about uh, the kind of care and uh, the way the kids are uh, taken care of over here these three weeks have arguably been some of the best weeks of my life uh, it's just the people i've met the friendships i've created the bonds i have with them now are just something truly special which can't really be replicated anywhere else Yeah, Eklavya has the screen share gone away. Should be back now. Yeah. Okay. So just go to the next slide. So I think uh, that should have given you a flavor. I'm not going to talk much about these slides. Uh, basically, these are children who came in 2015-16 and uh, they've entered college now. Uh, so all of them, even today, they remember uh, the gifted program. Whether they went for Duke PIP or our gifted summer program. So just uh, yeah, go on, uh, Eklavya. Yeah, that was Yamini Prashant. This is Rupa Shri, who was in, uh, who's now in Johns Hopkins, and Ashar Kaul, who's uh, in King's College London. Then Anish Kamath, who's uh, currently at IIT Bombay, and uh, TIFR. He's doing a quantum computing project. I just want to share this uh, Anish's mother's quote uh, before we go on. so what she says is it's not the because anish actually went to three programs duke pip 2015 the gifted summer program 2016 and duke pip 2017 two of these were physics courses one was an international relations course so uh, what his mother says is it's not the choice that the child makes that determines their success it is the conviction and effort that they put into the choice that determines it let them explore a variety of domains as diverse perspectives enrich their experiences so there is a lot of difference uh, it's not that you know children don't go to johns hopkins or stanford or somewhere without going to a gifted program but we believe that people who go through this journey of discovering themselves deciding what they want to do developing the competence before they get there they come in a very different way to the same college and uh, top university uh, so if you just share the next slide yeah this is my last but one slide on general fundas after that we'll talk about the courses i know some of you are asking about dates and courses but i think it's important to understand uh, uh, why you are uh, you know sending your child here uh, because this is not something uh, which is commonly understood um, so there is a whole talent development journey where uh, when you are 
from kindergarten to grade five, it is just potential. You are seeing that something may be there. You are doing wide exposure, uh, engagement. And uh, our strength really is working in this uh, grade six to 10 period, which is a very, very crucial phase, uh, which is, so the first phase of talent development is called potential development or potential recognition. The second phase is really called competence development. And through our experience, we've seen that four things basically happen in this camp and you saw the children speaking, the testimonials and so on. So one very important thing is for these children to find themselves, to find yourself. What are my strengths? What are my interests? To develop confidence. And you never find yourself alone. You always find yourself in relationship to others. And it is difficult for a gifted student to find themselves in relationship to others in a regular school because there may be very few children like you, right? So because uh, you are a topper in your school, you're doing so well, but you come to this gifted program and suddenly, you know, you are one among many. Yeah, you're also very bright and capable, but others are also there. Uh, but as a relief, there are, they share similar interests, right? So the kind of, uh, you will notice that many gifted children are more comfortable with talking with older children than their own peers. So here they find themselves, they find their tribe. Uh, not just with the other students, also with the mentors. And uh, you cultivate your ability, critical thinking, domain knowledge, how do I learn, how do I develop my skills? And last but not the least, and this is, we find the biggest challenge for uh, gifted children is to cultivate their socio-emotional or psychosocial skills. Do they persist? Do they collaborate? Are they able to, you know, take... Uh, well-judged uh, risks. So these are things which happen in the program and we've had children come for three, four programs over you know, uh, three years. And this is really a very important phase because by the time you enter grade 10 or come to the end of grade 10, if you have been through this and you have sort of experienced a few things, then you develop the competence. And if you want to build your portfolio for college admission, you want to do an extended internship and so on, you already have the background. You cannot start this in grade 11 suddenly and uh, for this to really work well. And then you go out into the great wide open, whether it's university, college, entrepreneurship, whatever you know the child chooses in today's world. So when this kind of opportunity is provided, uh, gifted students have a clear pathway. They can make an informed choice. Uh, match quality is a term economists use. Uh, basically, it means that the vocation career you've chosen, how much does it match your uh, skill set and uh, interests? And research shows that you do much better in the uh, long run if you have that match. Uh, otherwise, you know, you, uh, I mean, if you push everyone to IIT, JE, or NEET Medical, they may not really be uh, uh, suited for that, but they might be a brilliant. Uh, journalist or a brilliant VJ or a brilliant gamer or whatever it is, right? Um, so yeah, I've spoken about all these things. Next slide, Eklavya. Unfortunately, we've also seen a few cases where when this opportunity has been missing, uh, children, gifted children start underachieving at times. And the, there's research on it. It's not just our experience. There's an entire book called The Underachieving Gifted Child. So we see that there is possibility of disengagement due to uh, lack of challenge, uh, underachievement due to lack of executive function skills, disconnection because of a uh, lack of a peer group. Yeah, we can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, can you can you explain what is that underachieved uh, executive yeah, function yeah. skills? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll we'll just go back. I'll take a couple of minutes on this. So uh, basically, there are uh, three, four things which uh, are common with gifted students. So uh, sometimes what happens is because they may have already understood the subject, right? So what typically happens is suppose a topic takes eight, nine periods to learn. A gifted student might learn it in three, four periods. So, but because the school has that rigid structure and the child cannot go to the class, the child is getting bored. And very, very few schools uh, have this differentiation where the child can do something else. So it's like the idle mind is a devil's workshop, right? So now the child will, uh, you know, try to do something else, maybe after some mischief or try to read a novel under the thing. So 
So these kind of things sometimes lead to boredom. That is one kind of issue which is common. The other kind of thing sometimes which happens is uh, because uh, they may not, uh, uh, because they may find it easy, uh, you know, to uh, learn that subject, they will uh, not bother to organize themselves, manage their time, uh, make sure, you know, that they uh, prepare and something. And that may take them till grade six, seven, eight, but suddenly, you know, there may be a jump in the level in science and math, and but they have not developed those skills. So now what happens is you uh, start uh, underachieving because, uh, not because you don't have the intelligence and the ability, but because you have not developed uh, these uh, executive function skills. Sometimes also what happens is they feel more pressure because they know that they are uh, uh, very good and they can uh, do this, but maybe they're not able to live up to uh, that. Uh, so there are different kinds of things. Sometimes there is also a twice exceptionality. So, so we've come across uh, children at the intersection of say ADHD or a high functioning autistic or maybe dyslexia, dysgraphia. So these are some of the things. And uh, we will, uh, I mean, we, we can share material with you. We have various blog posts on this and we will actually do an entire webinar on executive function skills. Yeah. So go on, Eklavya. Uh, yeah, I think Eklavya shared with you in the chat, but I'll just emphasize the dates. So it's a three-week program for the older grades. Uh, I think grade seven students are also allowed to come for the senior program if they satisfy certain conditions, if they've come to our program last year or uh, Eklavya knows those details. May 8th to 29th is the three-week uh, program. Uh, for senior children and uh, for grade six to seven, the junior program, there is no one week program, only one course. Generative AI is a one week program. I'll talk about uh, that. Uh, and this is at Manipal Academy of Higher Education campus at Manipal, which is near uh, Mangalore. Yeah, Ekla, we will talk about the cost and uh, all of that. Um, we also have a career discovery and planning program, which we are not going to talk about today. We'll do a separate webinar on that. And that has somewhat different criteria because uh, that's uh, more about uh, you're already, you know, uh, in grade 10 and above, and it's more about uh, uh, careers and uh, so on. But we're not going to talk about that today. Yeah. Right. I think I've shared a lot about these things. Maybe um, so, Eklamia, uh, I think you can take it from here. You can give an idea of the schedule, safety, food and logistics maybe you can talk about that then we can take uh, questions directly after that and yeah we'll vishnu is there in something about uh, curriculum and and then and the uh, okay, okay what okay, all the yes. subject of so, subject sorry, options I, sorry okay yeah yeah so let me talk about the courses and then eklavya can come to this yeah fair enough uh, so so eklavya uh, should i share my screen because i have those web pages open or you can on your uh, Browser, just open up the junior program first and then the senior program. <clears throat> sure, I'm, I'll do that. Just give me yeah. a second. Yeah, yeah. So let me start talking about it while he is sharing it. So for the junior program, there isn't really a choice. Currently, there is one batch. Uh, maximum capacity is 18. I think uh, six seats are already filled up. So in the junior program, there are two uh, sort of uh, parts. One is more a science and math part where uh, children look into uh, how does a scientist uh, think and work? So how do you ask questions? How do you design an experiment to check your uh, hypothesis? Then there are certain uh, uh, think like a mathematician activities. <clears throat> uh, for example, you know, in school, you learn a mathematical procedure and you keep following it. But here uh, you sort of learn to understand how does a mathematician think? If you keep seeing a pattern, uh, is that equal to a proof? So, so that is uh, one week. And uh, the other week is more like uh, design thinking and creating things. It's uh, called uh, the joy of uh, creating things. Uh, so, Eklavya, uh, uh, maybe you can just increase the size a bit. Uh, so we have shared the link. So you can read these at uh, peace. So the joy of creating things, uh, uh, they will make a Rube Goldberg machine. Rube Goldberg machine is basically, you would have seen those things, right? Where 
it's a chain reaction something comes touches something then it goes so in that process you are learning to be creative you're learning uh some you know principles of say uh simple machines you're learning uh through trial and error you're developing some hands-on skills they will also make a 2d stop motion animation film so the junior program is about creativity uh design thinking about scientific and mathematical uh, thinking and you don't have a choice you basically do this uh, entire two weeks in this mix uh, if we may open up a second batch, but we don't know about that. So if there's 18 students, once these 18 students are filled up, we will see whether, you know, we will run a second batch right now. The capacity is only 18 for this. Um, right. I've talked about the pleasure of finding things out. You can read it on your own. I've already given you some background, uh, about it. Uh, yeah, we can go to the senior, uh, program. So senior program, there is some choice. So you can choose one of these uh, many courses, uh, uh, right? So so let me talk about that one week course first because that is the only one week course. Uh, and I'll tell you why we have only one week course. Uh, so there is a reason we keep this as three weeks because uh, from our experience, we have found that uh, three weeks is the ideal time, both from the academic learning as well as the social emotional learning part what happens is that the first three, four days go away and getting used to the situation. Some children are homesick. Sometimes you're, you know, overwhelmed by this uh, new situation. So you start getting into the group by day three, day four. And uh, then you, uh, you know, are able to get uh, much uh, deeper into things. Typically last week is more of projects. So you've learned enough to be able to do a project. And this is not a formula just we uh, created. So if you look at Johns Hopkins, Northwestern CTD, uh, you will see that all of them have three week programs. So it's a formula which has worked over uh, you know 30 years. Uh, there is one one week course. Uh, and uh, it is actually, it's actually the third week of the AIML course, right? Now the reason we have this three week, uh, one week generative AI course, I mean, all of you by now, you know, uh, everybody knows and has used perhaps chat GPT and Bard and uh, whatever other tools. So it's barely one year old and we have been, you know, playing around and experimenting uh, with it and uh, learning it. In fact, in the May program, we use the open AI API to really level up the kind of projects children could do. Uh, so this one week chat GPT generative AI course is not a technical course meant just for children who are into coding or AIML. It is a course meant for student interested in any subject to use it as a personal learning assistant to sort of, you know, realize how it can be used to know what kind of prompts to give, how it can hallucinate, what are the issues. So we felt that uh, because most people don't understand chat GPT generative AI, how to use it for learning. Uh, most teachers have not used it. We felt it is extremely important for everybody to have an opportunity to do this one week uh, course. We will probably do more editions of this in an online mode later. Uh, so that is the main reason we opened up uh, this course. So children who choose the intro to AI ML course, artificial intelligence, intelligence and machine learning, so first two weeks, they will do a bit of the theory of artificial intelligence, machine learning. They will do some practical things on various models. Uh, that is meant for children who are more curious and uh, interested in technology. Uh, and some of them, the children in that course, they will continue into the chat GPT generative uh, AI course. And, uh, but <clears throat> other children can join into this course. And if we have a lot of interest, we will run multiple batches of this. The other course is uh, the three modules related to economics. So uh, basically it starts with the basic uh, concepts of uh, economics, big idea. So it is, it is not at all like what the school economics course uh, will be. Um, talking about you know certain definitions and details is a lot about the big ideas in economics uh economics is basically about making choices and trade-offs so there's a lot of game theory uh things in this 
so when do you and using simulations to learn so if somebody cheats you should you still trust them or should you you know uh, cheat them so there are a lot of interesting uh, insights in that kind of a thing uh, economics relies a lot on data as well so there will be a fair amount of uh, uh, data analysis also doing this course and public policy so how do you sort of uh, at the intersection of economics and public policy uh, are uh, economic incentives the only way to influence public policy what are the other ways what is public uh, policy uh, and what is the role of governments non government organizations so this has been a very popular course over the last 2 uh, 3 years we've been offering it i think from december uh, 21 onwards uh, we've been running these modules uh then there is a course on introduction to engineering design via bicycles again a very popular uh, course where uh, children will do a lot of practical hands on things dismantling bicycles putting them together learning the physics of this the history of bicycles how they have evolved so more for uh, kids interested in engineering kind of things there is a course on game design uh, so uh, yeah some of you may be thinking that you don't want to send your child to a, maybe a game design thing uh, but uh, it's a very uh, interesting course uh, because uh, uh, it's not easy to design a game which meets uh, various constraints which can be uh, played properly uh, there are aesthetic design elements there are elements of rules which involve some you know a uh, uh, lot of strong logical reasoning um and uh, basically you have to learn to collaborate you have to learn how do you prototype a game how do you test it out and then see whether it uh, works um so that is uh, uh, one course introduction to aero modeling uh, it's basically a course at the intersection of uh, physics and uh, engineering i would uh, say uh this course we are allowing only older children so we will not be allowing uh, children who are uh, going into 7th grade into this course because uh, you will be flying one is the knowledge required is a little bit higher and also here children have to be a little bit mature and careful because you cannot just fly the uh, aeroplane in you know, a certain space and uh, things like that um explorations in math so for children who are really interested in math uh this will uh, look at uh, higher end math mathematical thinking a lot of games and puzzles the mathematics of that as well as we will take up some topics in graph theory so for example how does amazon route its packages what is the math uh, underlying it so it's really for uh, children who enjoy math forensic investigations is more a critical thinking course it has some biology elements uh but it's primarily how do you uh collect evidence to uh, come up with a theory and how do you test your theory of course there are murder mysteries and robberies and stuff like that and uh, how do we know in this assassination case what happens it's a lot of fun but it is uh, primarily a critical thinking investigative thinking course uh intro to neuroscience is yes it's a course for uh, students who are so neuroscience is an interdisciplinary field and it's a very uh uh sort of uh, i would say it's uh, just like artificial intelligence and machine learning cognitive science and neuroscience is also a future uh, field where uh, it's at the intersection of biology medicine computer science uh, psychology uh, yeah so children will do a, some experiments uh, psychological experiments they will learn about the brain uh, the behavior cognitive biases and so on the last course uh, is a personally uh, very close to my heart uh, we know so many issues we are uh, facing the air quality is not good enough water solid waste management uh, yeah so it's called life the city and changing climate uh, you are aware of the cop 28 in uae and how there is a sign up to transition out of fossil fuels our children are going to be living in that world so what do they need to do what are the kind of challenges how do we solve these challenges so uh, for children who are interested in the bigger picture and have a social and environmental mindset that is a good course so that's uh, so children will choose any one of these courses and uh, do 3 weeks uh, in that 
Uh, we will come back to your questions on the courses after Eclavia talks about the logistics and other details. So Eclavia, maybe uh, just give some high level thing in four or five minutes and then we'll address the questions. Yeah. No, those are not for the junior batch. Yeah. Eklavya, you are muted. Yes, I should be audible now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so apart from the academics part, there's a lot more that goes into the summer program, right? Especially uh, for the residential aspect of it, I'll just give you a brief idea. Uh, we are put up in one of uh, one of the premium hostels at. Uh, the Manipal University, where the students will be uh, in a one in a double or a triple sharing room, uh, air conditioned room with attached washrooms. Uh, we also have some a concept called residential counselors uh, who are a part of our staff and our team. Uh, they are basically adults between the uh, age group of nineteen to twenty five. Uh, who are trained and who have been a part of our team in the past and uh, they're all allotted about eight to ten students uh, who, who make sure of the mental physical and social well-being of the child uh, that's basically what the rc job role is outside classes they're always with their uh, 8 to 10 students and they're taking care of them through and through right we uh, at some point in the program you will keep hearing when you talk to your child about the rc through and through because they became they become their guide their brother their parent through the whole three weeks or two weeks that they're a part of it uh, hence, we make sure of the safety and security aspects in those manners, right? Uh, because there is one very simple rule at our program, 100% uh, and that even a few testimonials in the past said that um, students are very well made aware that uh, there is nowhere that they can commute or they can move up uh, without, having a, uh, without having an adult accompany them. Uh, so our uh, adult to student ratio at any point is between one to... Uh, one to four or one to five at any point in that matter. And in classes, there are uh, there's an instructor, there's a teaching assistant to an extent where even when they move from, say, a classroom to go to the washroom, there is an adult or a teaching assistant uh, invigilating and always making sure that the child is uh, uh, going to the washroom and then they make sure that they come back, right? Um, we have a very strict policy of an adult whose responsibility a child is to be the child to be ear, eyesight and earshot at all times and that's the basic ground rule and hence the rcs also stay by uh, stay close to the rooms that uh, the students occupy in that group of rc right um, that said uh, when we come to the food aspect of it we have uh, vegetarian non vegetarian and jain options we have an entire brilliant manipal cat uh, catering team that uh, specifically makes food for us we have a specific menu uh, there's uh, there's a nutritionist and dietitian throughout uh, the next few weeks who uh, when you, once you sign up the child closer to may you will get a medical form that will ask you to provide uh, instructions and food details and those are taken in consideration and then for the whole three weeks those uh, food the food is curated we food aspect we do uh, all kinds of kinds of cuisines and uh, make sure it is fun and exciting for the children because what we understand is the more Except the like, if we manage those uh, smaller aspects of making sure kids are enjoying the food, their stay is safe and their stay is uh, secure, they have that much more excitement throughout uh, the learning and the fun aspect of it. Um, yes, so, Clavia, can we have uh, pictures of the facility, classrooms, and then stay? Or is it possible to share? Sure. Uh, you can get in touch with me. I'll put out uh, my uh, details as well, and then I can share those aspects uh, separately. Uh, uh, those uh, residency counselors and all of that that I spoke are gender specific. So boys have an entire, uh, boys stay on the boys floor in the hostel dorms and girls stay on the girls floors on the hostel dorms. Manipal is very supportive in the aspect of understanding our uh, uh, extreme levels of safety and security to an aspect, to an understanding where they support us in making sure that the uh, the spaces and the floors that are occupied by our students are completely uh, blocked off for uh, students from uh, other as uh, other facilities or Manipal and all of those. So all the floors uh, may be the residential building or the classrooms that uh, we occupy in academic 
in the academic buildings are only and only for uh, the gifted students and staff to enter. We have a uh, we have a uh, an ID card or a lanyard that students and staff wear at all times, and even the security on Manipal ground as well are well aware that if they see that ID card, that is a gifted child, a gifted India team student or a staff, and they as uh, run through that in those manners. Um, as Vishnu sir has already mentioned, we've been doing this program since eight years. Uh, and like safety and security is top priority at the program. Uh, me and uh, along uh, me and my team on ground work. We are there about two weeks earlier to the program to making sure that everything is safe and secure for the children. The food is up to the mark. Uh, 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 apart from that, in the evening, we also conduct uh, great evening activities uh, for the social aspect of the program and uh, these are spaces where students get uh, get a chance to interact with other students in the program and on those aspects, right? And these activities range from sports to art to music and much more. Uh, uh, Eklav, you can also speak about the medical facility like, you know, Kasturba Medical College and uh, the doctors have been specially appointed for these children. Yes. So, uh, so even for the medical facilities, uh, uh, Manipal has a great medical uh, institution called the Kasturba Medical Institution, which is very close to uh, all our uh, uh, spaces that are occupied by us. Uh, we have a direct uh, uh, we have a direct connection with the uh, doctor on uh, on site at the Kasturba Medical College, and as well as uh, most of our uh, staff is also trained for uh, for basic first aid and. Uh, CPR for that matter. Few of us are also trained for CPR at that matter, right? So uh, that said, yeah, uh, one more very important aspect uh, that uh, excites like a lot of, uh, that makes the conversation and interaction a lot of fun is that this program is a completely tech-free program, right? When, uh, when I mean, what I mean by that is that uh, unless and until they require laptops or uh, phones uh, in their classroom, uh, they, the phones and laptops are secured with the residential counselor uh, kept in uh, safe lockers and only in the night for about 30 minutes of time, uh, they are uh, handed over to the children uh, to call back home and to interact and uh, get in touch. What this does is it uh, supports and it supplements a lot more social connections and social awareness for the students. Uh, so that's basically the safety and security. Of course, there are more details in case you want to get uh, about this particular aspect. You can surely get in touch with me. Uh, I will also go through one last. Eklavia, hey, can we pick and drop the child every day? Uh, yeah, no, sir. Uh, the program is a completely residential program and uh, we do not uh, provide uh, the day boarding facility. But in case of specific reason of doing that, we can get in touch post this call and then figure out what is the reason for it. And if possible, and if there is something we can help with, we would surely love to do that. Uh, one second, I will just, yeah, uh, for the people, oh, uh, just to, uh, quickly also give you this small understanding uh, the uh, the fee of the program for the senior group is uh, 1 lakh 80 and for the junior group is yeah for the senior group is 1 lakh 80 but there is an early bird discount that's running until uh, mid jan if i'm not wrong uh, which is uh, which is 30k and plus apart from that you have gold silver and bronze scholarships which are all listed on the website i'll also link the website uh, so that you can go through that and uh, check on your own end uh, for the junior program, which is the two-week program, uh, it starts from the 15th. For the, the senior program starts from the 8th of May to the 29th of May. The junior program goes from the 15th of May to the 29th of May. Um, uh, so the, for the junior program, it's 1 lakh 25, uh, which is the whole uh, 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 program fee. But there is a 25,000 early bird discount running for even the juniors. And plus there is an additional... Uh, 1074, if I'm not wrong, uh, as uh, your scholarships for the gold, bronze, and silver. Uh, I will just put the link onto the group so that you get also, you can just go through that and that has most of the fee information. Uh, this fee includes everything that uh, is required at the program outside uh, one of the courses, that is the aero modeling course, which has another robotics kit that you have to pay an additional 10k for but apart from that this fee includes everything that is required at the program uh, apart from your travel to and fro to the campus 
uh, for uh, students who are traveling there are a lot of students who join us alone who are traveling alone by through flight and all of those methods we make sure that there is a staff member there is a teaching assistant who uh, goes to the mangalore airport along with other students pick the kids up and uh, gets back uh, gets them to the campus and acts as a ward, uh, acts as a guardian for the students from the airport to uh, the campus the campus is about a one hour drive from the mangalore airport and there are a uh, lot of cabs and services that are there uh, available at the mangalore airport also plus post uh, you signing up for the program you can connect to me as well and i'll also provide you a cab guys number through our uh, uh, through our ways uh, there is as mentioned it's a complete residential program there is no accommodation for parents uh, what we what you need to understand and what we also try to do this through and through is that uh, what happens is that uh, maybe you as a parent will be able to make that time and effort to come and meet your child say in the second or the third week but what happens is that a lot of students who might be homesick on the day one or day two, especially with the senior junior kids, I expect that to surely happen because this might be their first time uh, uh, leaving home. Uh, what uh, surely happens is that if they see other parents come and meet, uh, meet their kids, that might trigger the homesickness again, say midweek, and then we have to go through the process again. So it's hence we try and make sure that the environment is such that the kids have a great time uh, as with my years of past experiences that I have seen, uh, we have always seen that students keep it, like students after a particular point start enjoying to an extent where we have to start pushing them to call home and remind them to call home and talk to parents because they are so engaged in the conversations and the chances that they are getting at the program, right? So uh, that's basically a gist of the safety, security, and uh, most of the aspects. Olivia, what if I want to get in touch with? Uh, kid or no whereabouts in a day. See, yeah. I, we cannot, we yeah. cannot wait twenty four hours that to know that my child is safe. No, no, I understand that, sir. So, uh, closer. To, so, once you sign up for the program, say in April, you get a parent handbook which has, uh, which has uh, two or three main uh, staff members uh, numbers on site. One of them being me. So, you will always have my number. Plus, you'll also get the residential, the program office's number, which will be active throughout the day. So, in case you have a, you have, you need to talk to your child urgently, or in case you need to get in touch with us, you will have our numbers, and they'll always be on. And uh, you can, and then we'll make sure that the child talks to you and gets in touch with you on those aspects, right? Because uh, we keep. Uh, so that's the main. Uh, that's the main uh, answer to your question. Is there so, uh, one question, uh, please. So, are we covering any all other university info also today, other than Mahe? Uh, no. So, as Bindu mentioned, that uh, there will be webinars for the international programs uh, happening for uh, going forth. But this program okay. is specifically for the India gifted summer program that happens. Uh, it, at are we open for question and answer rounds? Uh, yeah. yeah, just I'll just give uh, Vishu sir. Is there something else you want me to uh, touch? Uh, I, did you talk about the uh, time in the evening to speak to parents? Yeah, I did. Have so, you covered that already. Yes, yes. So, 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Time. So, so yeah. most days, yeah, yeah, go on. No, no, I did say it. You can go ahead. Yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, there, there was some conversation about electronic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Shriyan, please go. Yeah. Uh, it's it's Shriyan's father. So yeah. I would like to know what is the perspective? What's a, so if I have to spend, I'm still not convinced that I should spend this 1.25 lakhs. What yeah. my child will get after this right. course? Is right. there any right. age in, in future admissions? Is there any, see, even yeah. if. Yeah. Is shaping your is thinking power or thinking pattern or thinking abilities? It's still good, but uh, see, uh, what is can you um, help me with some of the uh, their career paths after doing this? How it has helped right. them? Right, right. Vishnu right. sir, right. Vishnu sir, Vishnu sir. On the same yeah. line, I have a question. Yeah. Be uh, attached to this question. Yeah. Yeah, Shalini, go on. You are muted now. Yeah. Who has decided these courses? Because, you know, there are so many courses like e-commerce and uh, mm -hmm. uh, something called everything is available on app. So why not courses 
uh, based on contemporary requirements and why these courses, you know, these courses are something which I have also done during my summer program. So I just want to know how and who decides these courses. What is the research behind these programs? Thank you. Right, right. Thank you. Thanks for your questions. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so basically, uh, so let me answer the first question first. So, see, I, I see three or four uh, benefits of these programs from the experience we've had uh, with, uh, you know, over the last seven, eight years. And uh, we are happy to, you know, if you're not convinced, we are happy to connect you to parents of uh, children who come to these programs in the past, you can talk to them. So first I would say, uh, and especially for the junior program, I would not say that there are tangible benefits, right? I, it is not going to get you admission to some university because you came to this uh, program, right? It is not going to increase your chances of uh, IITJ or something like that because this program and this sort. So for many of us of a previous uh, generation, uh, we have uh, perhaps uh, learned about, uh, yeah, it said my internet connection is unstable. I hope you can hear me. So basically, we've learned about what is work, how do we learn, doing something, uh, you know, uh, being challenged to a greater level. For most of us, it's happened, I think, uh, after college, uh, typically, and after college also, we've explored different things. So maybe between the ages of, 17, 18, and 25, 27, many of us have found what it is that we want to do to develop certain competencies, strengths, and so on. Uh, so here, through this kind of a program, and it's one program is definitely uh, very beneficial, but uh, ideally through three, four, five years of such exposure. And uh, so maybe, uh, Ikleba, you can share that slide, the potential competence, and you know uh, the expertise uh, thing. So what is basically happening here is in school you're learning to crack exams and that can only take you so far, right? So here you are actually learning to think on your own. I don't believe that you're learning critical thinking skills in school, if at all a little bit uh, maybe. So for example, if you read something in the newspaper or if you read something on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it is, do you even ask the question, who has published it? How do I do it? So the logic for these courses is that we've taken four or five kinds of competencies. One is critical thinking, to be able to ask. So where are we encouraged to ask questions? So if a person has to innovate, and a gifted child definitely can ask a lot of questions. Who is encouraging them to ask questions? We've had parents coming on the last day of the program and crying. So we are asking the parent, why are you crying? She's saying, my child is talking, explaining so many things. And we said, but your child was talking throughout here and so engaged. So we asked the child that what happened? You don't talk in school. And the child says, I'm not encouraged to talk in school, right? So how am I going to give you tangible benefits of this? This is a completely different environment. We are encouraging questioning. They are with other, uh, you know, bright children. They are with inspirational mentors who can answer many of their questions. They are getting exposed to all kinds of domains. I don't know whether uh, Eklavya talked about the evening addas. So you're in one course, but you are seeing so many different things. So last year, there was a talk on wilderness medicine. There was a person who's worked on electric uh, vehicles uh, in India. We had a conversation about that. We take them to the... Uh, student projects of the undergraduate uh, students, they are working on making a Mars rover, a Formula One car. So this is basically, you are in a very, very rich environment. It is like a buffet where you have a lot of wholesome experiences and a child is really, so again, to repeat those four things, see, uh, I cannot convince any parent who already does not feel it. If you already feel that a ch your child must find yourself, herself, himself, find their tribe, cultivate their ability, and up their social emotional skills, these are the benefits of the program, and not really any tangible admission here and there. Yes, of course, your portfolio builds your. You write a better statement of purpose for your, you know, 
uh, US University. So many people ask us for, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, what do you call that? The uh, recommendation letters, we have sent recommendation letters to students even four years after they are in our program. And if you look at the courses chosen, some are because it's contemporary, like say chat GPT, AIML. Some are because we want to give a window into, uh, so for example, one year a child does math, another year a child does engineering. So they get a sense of what is it that they are uh, uh, more uh, suited for uh, hands-on stuff. So we are not used as a culture to doing things with our hands. So these are the kinds of things. And uh, I'm happy to uh, talk to you for 10, 15 minutes, one-on-one, -on -one if uh, anyone wants to, you know, know so more. Vishnu, Vishnu is this. there? Okay. Yeah, somebody was saying I'll something. just yeah. change my, uh, so yeah. one more yeah. question. Will yeah. the senior program yeah. has a tangible benefits? None of these programs have tangible benefits if you are talking about college admission or things like that. No. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. 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 So uh, one more thing, uh, when we talk about yeah. these programs and uh, you said that, yeah. you know, uh, it is like in the age of 12 to 14, um, you know, we identify yeah. what are the interests of the child. So my child walks in and says he wants to do astrophysics, right? Me yeah. being a science student, I can make out, you know, just in a yeah. in a wiki knowledge that what is astrophysics. Yeah. But yeah. I really yeah. don't know if this that is the pathway for him to go for because, right. you know, Everything cannot be counted, right? Everything yes, we, we yes, do is not yes. profitable in life. Yes, there are a few things yes. for experience we do. Yes, but yes. when he comes and says, I want to do astrophysics, is it that he has identified that astrophysics is his, he's a grade seven student and he's a, a gold scholar with a very good percentile, in fact. But Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's great to know that he's interested in astrophysics. And it may turn out that uh, he will study astrophysics and do that or he's very young, so it may turn, because whatever he's been exposed to, he's choosing that. But if he comes to a couple of programs like this, he may, after three years, say, no, I want to do the, some other thing, and which is fine, right? Yeah. Because he's also very young, and he may discover that much as he loves astrophysics, there is something uh, he loves more, or he's stronger at something else. So that is, uh, so some of the children who've come for the junior and senior programs, they came to our career discovery and planning program uh, in May and July also. So that point of time, we get them to take a psychometric uh, assessment. And uh, uh, we get them to sort of, uh, you know, uh, look more carefully because by that time they're mature, right? They're 15, 16 and above. So that time we actually ask them to consider different things. For example, child wants to do medicine. Medicine is a great profession, but do they understand the implications of that? You know, so we then do all those things. Yeah. yeah so I think uh, we've anyway started with the Q and A. So I, uh, any any parents who are interested uh, to stay and ask more questions, uh, we are very happy to answer them for the next five, maybe five to ten, five minutes, maybe. Uh, re apart from that, I'm just sharing a Google form. Uh, on the uh, actually not a Google form, a form on the uh, chat uh, in our chat box. Please go ahead and fill that. Uh, it has an option of uh, wanting a one on one conversation. If you're already sure of wanting to be a part of the program, we would love to uh, have you sign up. Just as very basic question, please feel free to take one minute and fill that uh, so that we can also get back to you accordingly and make uh, arrangements so that we can support your uh, registrations aspect. Uh, I just add, send that across on the group so you can maybe take a minute or two to do that while if uh, maybe for yeah. another few minutes, maybe another two, three minutes, we'll take a few questions and then wrap up the this. So I love when I'm driving, I'm driving. I just have a quick question. You guys mentioned that the dates are from 8th to 29th of May. I just have a quick question that uh, is it going to clash as per my knowledge for the school timings because the school is going generally shuts off for the summer vacations around the 24th of May. Uh, yeah. No, this depends on different cities. So if your school is shutting in on 24th May, you're probably in uh, what NCR, Delhi somewhere or north of India. So yeah. in the south, uh, yeah. So in Bangalore and Chennai and all, a lot of schools close by April 2nd week. So unfortunately, you know, we don't... Uh, have a perfect time which uh, suits everyone. So schools from Delhi and your regions have come. They've taken special permission from, uh, you know, the schools and come for this program. But yeah, we don't have a program in June. We have a program in May. We have a program in July. Yeah. 
Eklavya, oh, so, can you just drop your uh, yeah, email? Yeah, I will also question. send. Yeah, I will also Eklavya, give. Eklavya, I have a question here. Yes. Uh, one thing is, uh, though the senior and the junior programs are conducted on the same campus and all, so yeah. uh, will they? Will the senior and the junior, uh, you know, uh, program participants will be in the same hostel, or will they be interacting, or they will be separated? So as mentioned in the uh, uh, in the chat as well, that uh, the students generally share uh, rooms with their similar age group. So a uh, seventh grader might be sharing a room with a sixth or a, uh, generally junior students are all together, but in case there could be a chance that they share, but they will be very similar age group for, and in the classrooms, of course, they are segregated, but uh, all the other times that is between four o'clock to nine o'clock when they're outside in the social spaces and the food halls and all of those, we are all together. Also, as I said, there is an RC who takes care of eight to 10 students. Uh, in that group, there will be junior and senior kids. The reason that we more do that is because to improve and in, uh, increase the social interaction. Of course, then the I'm, I'm sure some of you might have the question of uh, how do we manage and how do we make sure that there is no aspect of uh, of say uh, catcalling or for that matter bullying on those aspects but hence that's the reason why we make sure that an adult at all time is a part of every single group in social spaces to make sure that uh, at the smallest on the earliest in, uh, instance that we have realized or we come to know of it, it is immediately stopped and in, and in case we need to involve higher authorities, we, means like by that I mean the directors on the program, we surely do that. Uh, from our past years that we have been doing this program, we have made sure that the environment and the uh, atmosphere at our program is such that it's always welcoming and students love to be a part of the program. Hence, every year, mostly about 20 to 25 percent of our seats are filled by our returning students itself because they love to come back to our program to enjoy that environment and be a part of it. So that's that might answer a lot more. I, I have a question, Eklavya. Abhi. Vishnu sir just said that, you know, uh, these courses does not have a tangi tangible benefits when we uh, fill a form for probably Stanford or John Hopkins or these fancy colleges or Ivy League colleges. Mm -hmm. But if we do a program being a senior student, if we do a program from John Hopkins, a summer program, does that has a benefit? You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm putting an yeah, yeah. amount of, yes. Yes, yes. No, even that is not connected to the admissions, right? Okay. Uh, see, okay. certainly it helps your portfolio, right? Because you've uh, done that program, you put that even our program, all of that helps. But uh, there is no connection because you look at the admissions rates in Johns Hopkins, right? Or any of these Ivy League colleges. So they are looking for talent, certainly. And because of this program, you might have done a really interesting project, right? Uh, so, so yes. for example, yeah, so, so certainly the kind of skills, the things they pick up, they will probably allow them to build a much stronger portfolio. So while I was saying that there is no tangible, see, the reason I made such a strong statement is I don't, probably it will help quite a bit, but I don't want anyone to, I don't want to set wrong expectations. And uh, in my mind, uh, the reason I pitch for this program is uh, more for the intangibles and also because of my concern that I have seen some of these children actually falling by the wayside because they did not get such opportunities because they did not have this it, uh, that the talk about underachievement not fitting in so to me that is a much much more important reason uh, but yes uh, the ATDP Berkeley program uh, which I think uh, I don't know if it was there on the slide that also uh, uses the ATS thing there you get a certificate, which is on the University of California, sort of, you know, uh, the letter. Yes. Uh, so those things are good for the portfolio, but uh, nobody is going to guarantee you admission because you came to a summer program. Yeah. Definitely, you know, admissions is like yeah. tough process. Yeah. So definitely, yes. but yes. but it yes. certainly helps in building a profile for the child. You know, when oh, a child is walking in eight, probably for a certain, student of yeah. sixth and seventh, we can think of, you know, something doing just for fun. But when, when as they just, you know, ready to go to high school, I think building the portfolio becomes a priority. Am I right? I agree. I agree. I agree. And uh, we should build the portfolio. Uh, certainly an important thing. This will certainly help in that. All I'm trying to say is that the other intangible thing will be even stronger. For example, I would encourage your to you to send your children to Purdue or Northwestern or Johns Hopkins or any of these programs, because when you spend three weeks in that campus, 
with you know white american students people from europe chinese students i mean it's a completely different experience right many of this got this experience maybe only after we started working so that yeah happened. that has even more benefit i would say yeah yeah so, so the a different yeah. energy yeah. and 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 you know yes, a global yes. knowledge probably thank you thank you so much it was yeah, extremely yeah, helpful sure, thank sure. you so sure. thank you thank you so much uh, last yeah. question uh, you talk about yeah. that after this program you will provide at least uh, some assessment of the uh, child's likes right. dislikes right. or overall right. analysis and all so if you can share you know one such sample uh, of course yeah, you can yeah, take yeah. up the take away the name and all especially for the yeah, yeah 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 we will share it and it would be helpful yeah. for us to evaluate it in terms of you know what is the outcome uh, you know yes, for the, uh, yes. for the parents as well yes yes we'll said no no i think it's a good question and we'll certainly share that yes because My i last... understand it is not tangible and all but at least you know yeah uh, yeah uh, whatever output you are talking about at least you know some aspect yes, yes 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 and no, also are... uh, it yeah. would be helpful if i have gone through your website and uh, gone through yeah. your course curriculum and all Uh, but uh, you know if you can provide little more detail around the course curriculum and uh, maybe you know a little bit about a day at the campus okay especially for the right. kids because right. see as a parent i can also feel okay probably you know this is the right course and all but uh, we all uh, uh, with all due respect we all forget you know the most important uh, participant the student yeah. not yeah, present yeah, in this yeah. call you are present yeah. we are present yeah, yeah, this is yeah. being discussed everything discussed but uh, the person yeah, just to yeah, eat the yeah. food is not there so to bring the horse <laughs> to the pond is also a question huh? and these days yes, the, yes, it is not like someone else yes. can take a decision and they agree they are equal participant and very uh, you can't you can't tell the child and the child i agree it's a different generation you can't tell the child to go and the child to go absolutely yeah. so, so that's why yeah, yes sir we have more questions than us the, yes Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree. Us, so if yeah. you can help us, then it would be really helpful. Certainly, certainly, we'll help you with that. Yeah. My last question, which is probably a silly yeah. question, how about this laundry and everything? Do they manage on their own, or there is some Didi Bhaiya doing this for them? <laughs> no, I'll, sorry, I'll, quickly, yeah. Yeah, I'll quickly answer that now. So there is a laundry service that is provided at the program. There is uh, the RCs will help uh, uh, in managing the laundries and uh, help the students put those in account and. put them in the laundry bags and we hand it over to the laundry guy who helps uh, do it it's a uh, it's a not mandatory uh, uh, aspect of the this so hence it will be a paid thing but it's i think somewhere around 1000 to uh, 1500 for the two or the three week uh, option as per whatever the choice is so thank yeah. you yeah so uh, thank you so much dear parents uh, as mentioned uh i'll also again put my contact details once again uh please feel free to get in touch in case of further questions uh in case you already haven't uh please do fill the form that was shared a while ago we'll also send uh, the send the recording of the zoom call and the form uh, on email as well in case uh, you've not found time to do it right now and uh, hey, Kulabia, one quick question yes uh, for those parents who would like to uh, drop their uh, children uh, at manipal uh, yeah. how are the logistics handled uh, so basically you just come and drop them uh, so uh, close uh, as mentioned in the month of april you will receive a parent handbook which will have the exact uh, location and details we will also be creating a pair, whatsapp group uh, end uh, somewhere mid uh, april or end of april before the program begins also there will be a parent uh, orientation session which will be done on zoom about a week or two weeks before the program begins so all basic logistic information will be sent out there but you just come and drop the child uh, at the venue maybe you'll also get to explore uh, the rooms for two for few minutes we always ask the parents to uh, let the students unpack and put those because that's where the learning automatically starts off from the get go and then you can move off sir. so uh, on the day of uh, arrive like on the day of arrival when you come to drop the students there is nothing arranged for the parents but yes please note that on the 29th of april when the departure is happening on the 28 uh, sorry 29th of may on the 28th of may there is a graduation day which is basically an entire day scheduled to showcase what your children have gone through and explored and done uh, as activities or as projects in their whole classes of 3 or 2 weeks and then in the evening we have an entire graduation program with the 
the with some certain money part dignitaries we have the directors at the program being there and uh, your students will be facilitated with the the certificate and the feedback and the uh, appreciation letters from the instructors on stage and then there is which is followed by a dinner with the parents and with the parents and instructors having dinners together where you can discuss and get more uh, inter, uh, idea about what your child's journey for those few weeks are while students have a different uh, farewell party planned for them separately. So that means to understand uh, 28th is when parents and uh, the entire Gen Y's program uh, would be able to interact uh, one-on-one. Exactly. -on -one. Yes. Right, right. So you should come around uh, 12 noon on May 28th and then you can take the child and leave on 29th morning. Yeah. yeah. The reason of uh, it being 29th morning instead of 28th night, of course, if uh, your flights and stuff need to be managed, we can make those exceptions. But the reason we do that is uh, by the end of the program, we create a lot more bond and connections with the students. And we try and have like a final farewell uh, program and uh, dinner with the students. And hence, we require that they stay with us. And then 29th morning, you can pick them up. Uh, all students have to depart from the venue before 12 o'clock uh, afternoon. So please plan accordingly. Uh, you did mention about uh, certain activities such as uh, music, art, uh, some certain other social activities in the evenings yes. each yes. day. Yes. So to facilitate those, uh, will any instruments be uh, provided? Uh, uh, so I'll tell you, so we do have a talent night that happens at the program. Uh, which is about a few days before the graduation event itself. If your child can carry their own instrument, it is great. But uh, if they need an instrument for the talent night, uh, like basic instruments like guitar or keyboard will be only provided, but only for the talent night day specifically. Apart from that, it depends from activity to activity, but we generally do activities which are uh, which can encompass at least more than about 15 to 20 students so that a larger group can be a part of events and activities. Yeah, if the child is uh, 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 really into music and they would like to do something, like it's better they carry their guitar or whatever with them. Yeah. Achha, if the okay, student okay. has a guitar but needs an amplifier, okay, why don't you offline you check and we will try our best. For example, I could get an amp or uh, do something, but yeah, one on one we can take these. I already we've exceeded 25 minutes. Yes. So yeah. Thank you so much, dear parents, for joining. You have uh, my contact detail. Please feel free to uh, send me a message and in case you need further questions.